Walk around compound. See some tigers and some squeaks and maybe pits. Well, hello, good sir. With his head. Oh. Hold on, hold on. I gotta put the. I'm gonna put my phone in my neck and chin and try to keep it stable. There we go. Put my so I can put my glove on. I'm trying to keep it stable so it wouldn't flip around. Why don't you just get a GoPro head mount, Derek? I've got a GoPro head mount. I don't want to. Uh, how do you say wear it? Right now. Also, I I, I don't like want to. Uh, I don't want to carry it around in my pocket because you have to. You have to realize. A lot of times when I do like videos or when I start doing a webcast, it's because literally I'm outside, like the gator is over there, you know, with, oh man, for some reason, my, my gloves are not allowing me to zoom. Ow, oh, no, my technological abilities are hindered. All right, gotta take my stupid gloves off again. I was using my teeth. I was using my teeth. I, I was using my teeth to get my teeth. No, I was not using my teeth. I was not uh, using my milkshake makers to take my gloves off. <laughs> They're not that big. I'm not that fat. <laughs> um, <laughs> Derek said he was using his man boobs to take off his gloves. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at these boys. Look at these boys. Oh my goodness. Serious words and tones. Yeah, Raleigh's the one that's kind of taking on a little bit more of a, uh, I guess maybe a, a an alpha role. I mean, he's just kind of a bigger, a bit of a chubber, a chubbier kind of guy. But then Zuby has the uh, the ability to get up onto like that stump over there, and uh, I think Ra Ra's too much of a chubster to do it. So yeah. But anyway, what I was saying, okay, yeah, Gator is over there. We just dot, got we just dot gun cleaning these guys' enclosure, um, doing some catch-up work on some of the enclosures. Because, like I was saying before, how some of the cats, they basically say, like, no, thank you, please come again later. Well, sometimes then we have to go, like, the next day or the day after, and then we have to get the enclosures that we weren't able to get uh, the first day. And normally the cats are going to be a little bit more, uh, yes, while you can clean my enclosure, I'll, absolutely, I will lock up. No problem. They'll usually kind of do that on like the second or maybe even the third day when they wouldn't on that first day. But the uh, the girls, they they went in to go, they went in to go get lunch. They went in to go get lunch. Ah, yes, the slave master allowed his slaves to go and get lunch. What a benevolent man I am. What a benevolent slave master. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, they, were, they went in and got lunch, and then I said, like, hey, well, you know what? It's webcasting time. It's prime webcasting time. And I'm going to grab the thing that I have in my pockets is precious. That's my phone. It's not like a big camera head mount. It's my phone. Why don't you go inside and grab it? Because, I don't know, maybe I'll lose, like, the mood I'm in. Maybe I'll lose the magic of the cast. I'll lose whatever kind of feeling I'm having, you know, if I'm, if I'm kind of froggy. Sometimes it's not good webcasting time. Sometimes it's like, all right, well, I'm not really feeling the groove. Sometimes I start off a webcast and I'm not quite feeling it, and then I kind of grow into the webcast, and I get a little bit more loosey-goosey, and I'm able to kind of make some things happen a little bit more. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it never happens. Sometimes I, I, I get into, like, a weird kind of roll, and it just doesn't, nothing seems to stick. Nothing seems to stick. And then there's other webcasts where it's like everything is happening like great. Like the cats are reacting great. And there's some actual like insightful or maybe even funny things that are coming out of my mouth. And I know that that can be kind of a rarity. And just stuff is good and the conditions are good. And there's not a lot of wind like going into the, into the microphone kind of like, like this. Uh, like that. Uh. Oh, 
By the way, hello all you big cat lovers out there. It's me, Derek, again. Welcome to another super duper fantastic, wonderful, extraordinary, incredible. Girls are out taking a break, so it's time to do a webcast. Walk around the compound webcast. Yeah, how do you like them apples? Numbers. Uh, there are some people. I think that I'm getting, you know, oh, nope, oh, they are not in there. Where? Oh, there they are. No, and Wally's over there. Grass around the compound. Take a drink every time Derek mentions the drinking game. <laughs> I see that. I see that. Hi, Shadow. Um, no, uh, just to clarify, you know, people are like, I don't know, Derek sounds a little bit drunk when he's like, really? Really? Uh, no, I don't, that's the thing, like, yes, I will enjoy, uh, libations and spirits, I enjoy, I'm from Wisconsin, I like to have a beer, you know, that's a great kind of thing, hey, cheese and beer and brats and packers and all that fun stuff, so yeah, but as far as, like, before a webcast or when I'm out working with the cats, no, that is completely and, and horribly irresponsible, to engage in any sort of people are like, I don't know, Derek sounds kind of drunk. It's because I'm able to kind of do that thing and kind of, you know, I, I'm able to kind of, I don't know, like have that kind of, I guess, voice. Like, oh, hey, let me tell, let me tell you something. Hey, Wally, Wally, let me, let me, oh, excuse me, let me tell you something, bud. Like you and you and me, like we go, we go like way back, and and like. I want to let you know that, like, I love, like, I love you, man. Like, we're like, we're like, we're like best friends. And, and, and I just want to, I just want you to know. I just want you to know that like, you're my, like, we're bros. You know? <laughs> we're just like, we're like really, like, we're awesome together. We're like, we're cool. I've learned so much from you. Yeah, no, I'm able to kind of switch that on and off, I guess. <laughs> I go, what the is this doing out here? Bottle. Yeah, I can put it in my pockets, this precious. Crumbs on this jacket, this precious. Oh, what, you're going to actually get up finally now? You're going to actually get up? Noe. Oh, pretty girl. All right, come on over. Come on over. Hi. How are you? How are you? Hello. Hi, baby. Hi, miss. Hi, Noe. Oh, I smooshed my head. I smooshed my forehead. Um. Yeah, some people. Oh, some people like the last one. Some people are like, I didn't really like that at all. And then some people are like, ugh, ugh, sports talk. Ugh, uh. Look. I don't do it all the time. Sometimes I'm going to talk about my Green Bay Packers. You're going to have to uh, deal with it. And then the glasses, the glasses, they come down and then they land on my face. But yeah, no, sometimes, it's not going to be every time. But I'm going to talk about the things that interest me and the Green Bay Packers are a thing that interests me. I'm so sorry that you're so above the barbaric sport of, of gridiron football. <laughs> Why don't you go wear a, th a fedora and read your Nietzsche, your Friedrich Nietzsche, my lady? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Was it because I was speaking in that tone? Uh, some of the guys I uh, some of the guys I work with, we have been talking about uh, we've been talking about that milady kind of phenomenon a lot, a lot. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, uh, certain individuals who, they might like to wear fedoras and they, they, <laughs> they, they, they have interesting conversations on the internet. Um, and yeah, it's that whole, um, um, has it, I, okay, I gotta ask the, the ladies, you, of the pride, you, um, <laughs> has anyone... I gotta, I gotta, I wonder, has anyone ever, like, legitimately, and not, like, ironically, or trying to be goofy or silly or cute or anything like that, has anyone ever approached you and legitimately 
called you, like, said, like, m'lady to you. Oh, here's your program for m'lady. You know, t tip of my fedora. Has anyone ever done that? <laughs> I just, I want to know. I want to know. Go to the comment section, please. Tell us all about your m'lady stories. I'm not trying to say it. It's like, oh, I'm just, I'm, it's kind of, it's, ah, oh, it's fedorable. It's fedorable. But yeah, looking at things like uh, the uh, Just Neckbeard Things subreddit, oh boy, some of that stuff is brutal, but it's funny. It's being hurtful to a certain group of individuals, a certain group of young men, of course, it's marginalizing them. I Look, I'm sorry, I'm, yes, it might not necessarily, it might not be the most polite stuff, but I'm uh, sorry, it's kind of funny. You can find humor in sometimes things that are uh, impolite. We've talked about that before. I'm not going to harp on those things again. Oh, I don't want to harp on things for too long because goodness gracious, I'll get some more, I'll get more flack from the masses. You're being a little bit crazy right now. You're being a little bit crazy. That's another thing. Like people, they get like, you know, he uses the word crazy a lot and it marginalizes people with mental ill. I like, I don't think, look, I've been clinically diagnosed uh, with things. We'll just say that. I've been clinically diagnosed with things. And whenever I hear words like crazy and stuff like that, like I don't feel oppressed or marginalized. Maybe it's me trying to own it against all the normies. I don't know. But I, I don't feel like it's like this horrible thing, you know, that I that I use the term. And yes, that's like from people on the on the Pride Strong subreddit. They will sit there and say, like, I wish that he would say things, or I wish that he would talk about this or this or that or something like that. And I read that stuff and I take it into consideration. And some of the stuff I do apply to how I conduct myself. And I have actually used a lot of people's feedback over the last couple of years of doing this social media stuff, I've actually kind of changed a lot of my outlook on a lot of things based on like the, the wider perspective, the greater perspective that uh, this audience and this community has given me. And then some of the stuff is like, uh, okay, this is a limit. This is a limit. Bobby! Oh, goodness gracious, I can't continue to keep on showing Bobby without showing Max and Mia. That's another... Uh, that's another thing. I gotta make sure that I'm showcasing them. And it, that's, that's a difficult one because they really are, I mean, they're significantly more, um, like, attuned to their wild roots. Uh, whereas Bobby, she was, like, way more accustomed and socialized to people for, for years. Because Bobby's, like, four years old. Max and me are babies, and then they grew up out in the wild. Um, so there's a lot of times where they're off and they're hiding and they just don't want to be... I don't want to be around people. Um, so I, I don't try to get terribly too much in, in their business. Um, you know, it's like Ace. I know Ace is inside the, the center portion of the lockdown area. I'm not going to go in there and try to bug him. What? Just so I, I just so I can get like, <laughs> like, I mean, sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I won't, you know, I, I don't think that it's necessarily necessary. Uh, Derek is talking about the barbaric uh, practice of uh, combat sports. It is not like the noble endeavor. It's not like the noble and intellectual game of wits. The, the battle of the intelligence, such as chess. Why is he talking about... Why is he talking about the barbaric football? Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, he's just making everyone mad. Unfollowed. Unsubscribe. <laughs> I'm getting torn so many different ways. Uh, 
And then, of course, there's going to be the, you know, and I'll get the feedback from the nice people like, Derek, you do you. Just be you. And I'm like, I will. <laughs> like, I'll see that and I'll be like, yeah, high five. These people get it. No, and I do. I do. I, like, I, I listen to feedback. I really, really do. I totally do. I, I never want to make it seem like I don't. Or that I don't appreciate it. Or that, uh, uh, that it doesn't have an effect on, on my, my overall outlook on things. Um, yeah, I do. I do. And, like, I can't always, like, that's not, I can't always, and, and a lot of you folks know, like, I can't always get into the, um, into the comment section and actually, like, like, type out things and responses to people. So a lot of times I just have to, like, see the things that I read and then, like, kind of touch upon those points in these, uh, scheduled webcasts. Hi, Savannah Banana. How are you? There is another one, and I think, I think also I'm, I'm attracting a lot of new, uh, subscribers to the YouTube channel, and they're starting to watch the, the webcast, which, that's awesome, that's great, but there was, like, one person on the last webcast was like, you talk too much, shut up, and this is like, this is the webcast, like, it's, I've done, like, over 150 episodes of this, this is kind of a thing, it's kind of, like, what we do, in the webcast, like, we, we, we talk, and there's cats, and, yeah, I kind of need, like, I, it's a, kind of an important element of the webcast is to engage in speaking. <laughs> shh, shh, don't tell, I'm sorry, shh, don't, <laughs> don't let my secrets out. I kind of have to talk. Uh... Finally, 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 got to give an update on the, uh, on the, the stuff, the things, the goings on over there. Um, but finally, finally, finally getting, um, a lot of, uh, major work done. Uh, there was some stuff that was on hold, trying to get contracts lined out, trying to get workers, uh, squared away. Because you also have to realize with, like, contracting jobs and, like, building jobs... Um, like you have to do the electric and then the plumbing and then the drywalling and then you have to do like there's certain things you have to do um, in time like you can't you know you can't do the plumbing and then do the framing and then do the drywalling and then do the electric like there's things that have to go like in order in sequence I don't know that'd be a weird house <laughs> if like if you were able to do that that'd be fantastic hi bud why don't you acknowledge the cats more because sometimes I have to, like, keep, like, sometimes I have to keep on track and keep on point with an idea that I'm having. And if I get off of the idea, I go on too much of a, of a Hello Kitty tangent, and it's difficult. Hi, Boom. Hi, Boom Boom. Hi, Bud. Where are you, Chubsters? Oh! They really like this weather. They really like this. They are digging it. Oh, look at that. Oh. oh, it's so nice. Oh, the wind washes over my, all over my naked body. And I feel effervescent, like I just bit into a York peppermint patty. I get the sensation that I am a nude tiger in a cool winter's breeze. Get the sensation. But yeah, no, they're, uh, oh, we've got the welders and they're out there working on the pipe that, uh, Pride member Christy Kroger, uh, so wonderfully donated. And, uh, the welders are out there, they're mapping some things out and they're going to be putting stakes in the ground for Boomer and Slade's enclosure. Finally, we had, uh, electrician out there yesterday finishing up all of the, uh, different elements and things within the actual building itself. And then the plumber is actually out today, uh, doing a lot of work down there so yeah it's yeah it's getting done it's getting done um so i had to give the uh had to give the update about that oh grass around the compound gotta go over here gotta talk to kate because kate's not gonna come over to me she's still a little bit uh upset you know about the whole Hi, baby. About the whole lockdown thing. She gets a little bit anxious whenever I try to get her locked up. She thinks I'm gonna clock her in the head with a with a gate again. I don't blame her. I don't blame her. So, 
a lot of it is just like kind of conditioning you know taking her in and out taking her in and out taking her in and out giving her chicken calling her a good girl letting her know that this is not a bad thing it's not a scary thing and sorry that was a one-off kind of thing that happened let's try to get past it I think that may have been the longest moo in Big Cat Derek history. <laughs> I think it was. I think that was the longest moo in the history of this social media enterprise known as Big Cat Derek. You just saw history. Kate did the longest moo. The longest moo. Can anyone find a moo that is longer? Go to the Pride Strong subreddit. Duke it out amongst yourselves. Duke it out. Figure it out. Oh. Well, that was cool. We get excited over moos here. Welcome to the community. We have snacks. <laughs> I was informed that there would be snacks. Ah, uh, there are no snacks. I'm like, oh man. Derek lies! He said there'd be snacks. Sorry. But yes, the Pride Strong subreddit is doing well. A lot of conversations are happening. Actually, people, they go in and then they, they talk about the... Uh, um, they, they definitely give, like, critical reviews of the webcasts. Like, well, I think that this one was a little bit more shallow. I wish that he would have said these things. And I understand, you know, sometimes... Sometimes, uh... Sometimes I can be a little bit... You know, uncouth. Maybe even unprofessional. It's a weird thing. I ride the line, and I do this kind of, like, on purpose, in a lot of regards. Uh, between professionalism and... And, uh... You know, silliness and... Um, shockingness and entertainment and whatnot and it's a weird you know kind of thing because it's like I still I want to be uh, in some circles I want to I need to try to be taken seriously if I'm trying to talk to you know scientists and researchers or if I'm trying to actually um, project like ideas of conservation and stuff like that sure I, I, I need to have some sort of uh, cl of clout so that a followership can they can they can they can hear what I say and then take those words seriously but then at the same time I do also want to I uh, I do want to not be afraid of engaging in kind of silly endeavors and peats and squeaks and I want to talk about you know goofy stuff and weird things that happen and sometimes I want to go on rants and sometimes I want to you know I, I, I vent and get upset about certain things and and sure it's yeah it's it's definitely it's like, I, it's, a, it's a weird kind of uh, line that I try to ride. And I, I admit, I don't always do it great. I'm still making this whole thing up as I go. There's no, I, 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 didn't, I never read like a how to be a content creator for dummies uh, book or anything like that. You know? You know? Hey, take another, take another drink. He said, you know. So yeah. Oh gosh, take another drink. Because he said so yeah. These are, oh my gosh, these are like crutches. These are verbal crutches that I use. I would have never known. Hi. Oh, numbers. Verbal crutches. I need to try to like get better. I'm slacking on my webcasting skills. I'm not taking it as serious oh no i'm taking it seriously but i'm not uh i'm not trying to hone and craft my skills at speaking if i'm trying to think of the next thing i gotta think of the next thing or not have some sort of verbal tick like a so yeah or maybe i just keep on doing it because that's kind of like my signature isn't it <laughs> Everyone's got to have a signature, Derek. Maybe that's just yours. Kind of a weird signature. So, yeah.
Shorty Awards. They are still being voted upon. Please go and vote. I need all the votes I can get. I need all the help. It's not just for me. It's for care. It's for the cats. It's for the footprint. It's for everything. Shorty Awards. That would be cool. To go to New York. I can go to New York. Oh my gosh. I'd go there. And then I could probably, you know, set up like a meet and greet with some of the East Coast, uh, the Upper East Coast Pride members. Hey, I'm going to be at this place at such and such time. Come over and see me. I'm like, oh my gosh, a whole seven of you showed up. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was gross. It's cold outside. Come on. What do you want from me? Oh my gosh, Archie. Bow with his peats. He's like grabbing his peats and he's doing yawn stuff and now he's like rubbing on things. It's so cute. Look at him. Oh, Archie. You're a mess. You're an absolute mess. Look at you, bud. Oh, that was good. That was good. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Hi. Hey. How are you? Hi, Lay. Hi, Lay. Nice sugar pie. Beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. Pretty girl. She's more than just physical beauty, Derek. Don't judge her just on those physical attributes. You're keeping her down. Sorry. Oh. I want to thank you folks. You know, for being here. On this uh, strange odyssey. This strange big cat rambling odyssey. It's been happening for a few years, you know. A lot of ups and a lot of downs. And I know that I haven't always been perfect. Far from it, you know? In this weird kind of like figurehead position that I have. This kind of, uh, you know, this, this, this position, I guess, I inhabit. And I get a lot of support. I mean, I'm not always correct on things and sometimes I can be, you know, uh, Sometimes I can be very immature, and sometimes I can um, not see things with the clearest of eyes, and um, sometimes I can be, you know, hurtful. I try to do the best I can. I think that's just like everyone. They just try to do the best that they can with the time that they're given, you know? They just try to just go through their lives, and they just try to be, you know, try to do good. Just try to do good. That's what I try to do. I don't try to make it you know, more complicated than that. I used to. I used to. I used to be a little bit more like the uh, uh, fedora tipping guy. Huh, milady. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Spend all of my time just eating bad food and watching anime and playing video games. Not getting out there. <laughs> and then being just like, I don't know, I, you know. Oh, hey, milady. Oh, gosh. Awkward. But yeah, I've used this platform for a long time to just kind of, you know, just talk about stuff and promote the cats and then, you know. 
uh, uh, explore some of the deeper kind of uh, thoughts that just kind of rattle around my head in the moment. And you folks have been wonderful. You know, you've been wonderful. You've been great. You've been supportive, not just to me, but to each other. And what it is that we're doing out here. You've been accepting, you know, for even despite despite my flaws, of which I have many, <laughs> supportive. You know? You know? Love you guys for that. And girls. And other individuals of, uh, you know, gender fluid nature. And uh, non-gender specific nature. Uh, tiger kins, dragon kins, all of them kins. Sure, I got a couple out there. Why not? All of yous. Love you. I appreciate it. We're gonna keep on doing this thing, you know? This weird, rambly tiger ride. And we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. So, that's enough I, out of me for now. That's all I got. Talk to you folks later, okay? All right. All right, bye-bye. Hey, some of you are probably saying, how come you didn't talk about Taurus T-Bone? And then other people are like, who's Taurus T-Bone? Um, and the Taurus, as far as this webcast is concerned, the Taurus T-Bone incident took place probably like 20 minutes after I got done filming it. Um, and I'll tell you about it. Uh, as a lot of you know, we get cows and horses um, donated from local ranchers to, you know, feed to the cats. And sometimes they're alive and sometimes they need to be put down. Now, again, I gotta reiterate, these are animals, if they're not already dead, they're sick, they're injured, they're dying. Um, oftentimes we get referrals from veterinarians and ranchers who try to fix their animals. Um, and when they can't do that, they take them to us and then we, you know, put them out of their misery. Um, well, this cow came in, um, she had been sick and down and, um, not able to eat or drink or anything like that for, for days. Um, rancher's been trying to fix her, couldn't do it. And he just didn't want her to be hurting anymore, didn't want her to suffer. So he brought her over to the, uh, facility and I, uh, I shot her with a 30-30 rifle. And, uh, one of our interns, uh, well, intern supervisor, actually, Lily, um, she noticed after a little bit that the cow's tummy was still moving. Um, she put her hands down there and she said, there's, there's a baby in here. And basically it was like, ah, oh, shit. All right, get a knife, get a knife. Um, and to be honest, don't, don't expect this to live. Because I didn't, I had no idea, like, how far along to term, you know, she was. I've pulled out fetuses um, out of cows and horses many times in the past. Uh, but they're, you know, sometimes they're just, they're very, they're very, uh, they're not quite developed. And, you know, if, if it was that, if it wasn't quite developed, I mean, that's basically another thing I'd have to, you know, euthanize. <clears throat> so I cut, I cut into the, um, into the mom's tummy and I reach, I reach inside and I reach up to my shoulder. Um, and this is one of those things where it's like, I, you know, I, cause it, it helps that I've, I've butchered literally thousands of, of livestock animals to feed to the cats because I kind of know my way around. I know what a uterus feels like like a full one, which is a strange thing to know, but I, I do. And I reached in and I reached to where it was at. And then I, I found it. I'm like, ah, there we go. And then there's body. There's a, there's a little body in here. And I, I pulled and then I was able to cut through it. And then, and there was uh, two little black 
Fuzzy Legs um, that came out. And I'm like, oh, this seems like it's fairly well developed. So uh, we uh, we pull and, and, and we get uh, this big uh, black bull calf comes out. But, you know, he's been inside for, for a little bit. Um, you know, after her, after her heart's not beaten, uh, and he's got fluid inside of him. So like, he's having a rough time too. He's starting to go, he's starting to go down. Um, and, uh, you know, we had, uh, Lily there and then another intern, Manisha, and then another intern, Devin was there and, um, had Manisha and Devin go get a bunch of towels and Lily and I got to work. Um, trying to get all the fluid and everything out of um, the little calf's lungs and get him to start breathing again. Because he wasn't, he, he was, you know, just wasn't able to do. So we were clearing all the gunk out of here. We were elevating elevating his backside so that he could get stuff out. Um, doing, like, you know, chest compressions because his heart wasn't, you know, quite going right. And um, I was even doing... Uh, I was closing his mouth and then doing like rescue breaths, like into his snout. Um, I did that a bunch of times to try to, you know, fill his lungs with air so that he would start hacking out mucus. And then eventually, and it seemed like forever, but it was probably only like 10 minutes of us doing it. Um, he started actually hacking up and he started to blink and he started to, started to moo and... Oh my gosh. And we, you know, he's big. He's big calf. He's big, big boy, big boy. And um, we rushed him over to the, to the vet hospital to see Dr. Bill. And um, that's when the staff started to work on him. And they started to get him uh, taken care of. And they put him on colostrum. And, um, and yeah, yeah. That's, uh, and like, it's, it's been, it's been a number of days and he's, he's doing good. He's doing good. Like he's starting to, cause he was born a little bit premature. So he's not been able to walk as well as, you know, like what most normal newborn calves do, but he's starting to finally walk. He's starting to suckle on his own. Um, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a really great thing. It was a really cool thing. Um, Dr. Bill the plan is right now that Dr. Bill's going to probably put him in his pasture, his own pasture. So it means Dr. Bill's going to, um, is going to have Taurus, you know, uh, to, to be, you know, living and, and chewing on grass and, uh, just, you know, being a steer. So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool. It's, you know, I, I've, I've spent years, um, being on the other end of the spectrum of, you know, livestock and, when they come in, that it's nice to to be on the on the on the life end, you know. But um, I've got a couple of here's some videos of him. Just so you, could, I went to go visit him at the vet clinic. Um, so I'll put that up on the thing here in a little bit, so you can you can see you can see him and you can see how he's doing. You know, slobbery. There's a slobbery mess. All right. See you in a bit.